there were times where like I wanted to like either harm myself or where I thought, you know, I was going to trigger warning, excuse me, where I thought I was going to harm myself and, you know, music was there and it saved my life. You know, that's what I would put on when I was at my lowest, darkest points where I needed saving. It was always let me put on a song and let me just sing my heart out and like cry all over the floor and like get out of my system. And I've always felt better from music. And so I always say that music saved my life and I love the healing energy that um, it can bring sometimes, and I would just love, I would love, love, love if other, if I could give that same experience to other people yeah. too. That's where I really connected with yeah. music was in my darkest moments, you know? What's up, you beautiful beasts? I'm Katie. I'm on a mission to help humans become the best possible versions of themselves and to strive for overall health, mental health, emotional health, physical health, all of the healths, without ever having to step on a scale. I have had the privilege to talk to all kinds of different humans who've been through a plethora of experiences just being a human and existing. I believe that every single time somebody shares their story, at least one person listening will learn from it, be inspired by it, and maybe, just maybe, even change the entire direction of their life. These are the stories of humans unveiling their beautiful beast. Keep listening. This is the Unveiling the Beast podcast. What up, Beast? Welcome back to the show. Today, I'm hanging out with bright light of a human, Marky Andrew. In this episode, we talk about following your dreams, even when your own mind tries to tell you that you can't do it. He also talks about how music saved his life, and at some point, we talk about an eerie, abandoned vehicle. As always, I hope something lands with you today. I hope something you hear tugs on your heartstrings and or I hope you laugh. Do you like the sound of your own voice? I do. Yeah. I've been spending a lot of time with it recently. So yes, I do a little bit. I have to learn how to love it, especially because I was the type of kid growing up. Like I would not like watching videos of myself like... um, like singing or speaking or just when I would record my voice, I was always like, yeah, like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. So I think, yeah, I have to learn how to love my voice. And you have a great singing voice, too. Thank oh, you, we started, you. by the way. Hi. <laughs> Hi. The Hi, Open. guys. I'm with Mark. <laughs> Hola, me llamo Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so are you in that generation that's too young for Facebook? No. No? I grew up on Facebook. I okay. loved Facebook, yeah. Even though I was probably like 11, 12, 13, I was still uh-huh. on there like for family or I even have like a bunch of videos of just me recording my brother. I'm always recording things. <laughs> even when I was at home, I was always that person to record everything. So yeah. That's cool. How old are you? Can I ask? 24. Aww, I turned 24 this year. Baby. Yeah, a little baby, yeah. So yeah, I invited you to be on this podcast because of your inspirational videos that you post on instagram i was like oh my gosh this energy Mm -hmm. is amazing and so thank you where does that come from well i think i've just always been that friend to like want to uplift other people or just i'm always that friend where you know i'm that person too where i just attract a lot of like people who need to hear things that they don't know they need to hear Mm, talking to people or even just sitting down like when people come to me for advice it's always 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 oh i like you said that and i didn't know i needed to hear it until you said it you know thank you so much like um, i've always been that person um so i think that healing energy is naturally inside of me and also i was a cheerleader in high school and college so i just have that like G G O O like go fight win like you're gonna go make it through team. it yes exactly yeah. like I've always had that like role model mindset so I always wanted to put like good things back you know to get good things back yeah and I have seen a lot of good things so I am grateful that I did start that because I did meet people from it mm-hmm. who have told me like oh thank you for saying this or keep going or you're you're like you said like I like the energy that you have when you yeah. say those like things like that so yeah yeah I think that the world needs more people like you because there's so much negativity out there yes. especially like I mean social media you can kind of always find what you're looking for but you can go to any um anyone's post and read the comments and there's always something negative I'm like yes Man, always just, always 
we need more marks in the world <laughs> yes 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 and, yeah. and when, even when i started posting those i think the algorithm changed where people with like-minded with like the same type of video style would pop up there's a lot of people doing it so i think yeah there's a lot of people out there that just are there for yeah you just have people to know support to yes yeah. exactly and i think just putting yourself in that energy will attract like-minded people you know yeah um, we were actually having, a, a, I was having a conversation or watching a video or something about algorithm mm -hmm. and uh, you basically will see whatever you click on. So if you click on something like more than once, you're going to see more of that. Exactly. So if you're clicking on positive posts, um, you're going to see more positive posts. If you're clicking on... Um, how to crochet you're gonna see more how to <laughs> yes, crochet, exactly crochet and then know? knitting and then it'll branch off to like other things yeah embroidery you know you it'll definitely take off into whatever yeah like the little niches there you go that's what they call them nowadays mm -hmm. the niches yeah so like a lot of times um people will feel like they're not really in control of what shows up on their feed and, and to an extent they're not but you really are like mm -hmm. you are in control of what you're looking at. And I say, if it makes you feel like shit, stop following it. Exactly. Yeah. Or stop engaging into it. Also, yeah. have you heard that your phone is listening to you? Yeah. Like when you even talk about things and it, it'll start popping up on your phone. That has never happened to me, but I <laughs> always see and hear people talking about it. I think that is so crazy. I really like turtles. <laughs> How do I make a and million dollars? porcupines. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, and then you'll see turtles in Brooklyn Vines or at the beach or something later. Watch. <laughs> I'll send it to you the when government. I do. Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> and I'll, I'll be laughing. I'll be like, "No, they're onto us. They're onto <laughs> us." So tell me, um, you're also a singer, a very good one. <laughs> no, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. Um, how long have you been singing? Ever since I can remember. Ever since I can remember, I've always been like gravitated more towards like plays and just being in front of people. I remember as early as like um, third, well, even before that, before I was in school, I, I remember my mom had like a little iPod, like one of the first generation iPods and there was like Britney Spears on it. It was mm -hmm. Slay For You. I remember being like four or five just with the with the um, iPod, just dancing um on like the table i don't even remember if i was in a diaper or if i was in underwear yet but i remember like very fetus memories of me just singing dancing i was always my mom said i was always spinning around and like mm. trying to dance and things and so then I, I was just always gravitated towards you know the then the plays and being in choir and just music and being a cheerleader just being in front of people i like that um i like putting on a show you know when i'm in my element and i yeah. and i feel like it's my time to pop off. You know, I'm going to pop off. Like, I have to give it my all. And I just like performing. Yeah, I, just, I like performing. So I just feel like for as long as I remember, I've always just been singing or I hum or I whistle or just always something like song or music related. Yeah. I love it, too, because it kind of it um, adds to your personality, because like if you weren't doing those things, people would probably be like, Are you feeling OK? Like you're yeah. whistling or humming or mm -hmm. just singing to yourself. Um. And I can't say that from experience because I, I don't know you that well, only from what I see on the gram. Yeah. Um, but I can just imagine you're that person that's just like, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my gosh, I'm definitely that person. I'm definitely that. Me or too. Like even, even sometimes I'll speak, like somebody will ask me something and if, if I have like an opportunity or a chance, I'll be like, no, thank you. Or like something, you know, like something you like that. That's definitely yeah. me. What what do you hum to yourself most often, or is it just kind of random? What do I hum to myself most often? I think I have like a little like um, I always do like the same little riff. It's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like the same riff always. Mm -hmm. or like looking for things mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, like the same that I think that same riff. I promise you, it's the same riff, the same notes every it. time. Mm -hmm, like you know do you have like um not an instinct but like a reflex like where it's like natural and it's like the same thing or like um a mannerism or like it's always like the same exact kind of way that's the little hum that i'm always doing mm, got it humming just scales or top to bottom or bottom to top when you said instinct i don't know why i thought of this story but i'm gonna tell you a story okay um uh when i 
Okay, this is <laughs> so random. <laughs> I had a scheduled C-section. Okay. The morning I went to the hospital, I went into labor. Okay. Every time I had a contraction, uh-huh. I would sing opera. Oh, oh my goodness. So I'd be like, <laughs> oh my goodness. And I love that, actually. <laughs> actually, like that, I would love to have been there just watching or listening. I'm like, like in pain and entertaining everyone still. Mm-hmm. It was great. But yeah. that's what it is. It's like when you like to sing or like, because I feel like for me, the way I feel like singing or music is always incorporated to my daily life. Like I totally, fully understand that. Like it just happens. It just you just yeah. do it. Even like when you're hurt or when you know, like it's always there. It's like a reflex. It's yeah. like, yeah. Do you ever like narrate what you're doing in song? So, for example, I'm going to the fridge and I'm going to get a snack. No, I don't think I don't think I'll do whole sentence. Wait, actually, I don't think so. I don't know. You should try it sometime. I don't remember it, but I probably have. I I'm probably going have. to the bathroom. Yeah, no, not like that. You're like, no, I'm leaving now. No, no. I know I have done that, just not in that context. I think I do it in other ways. Um, no, but I've definitely done that. Okay. <laughs> I've definitely done try, that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, no, no, no. I sing feelings. You sing feelings. There you go. I'm, so I'm okay. not like, oh, I'm going downstairs. I'm like, oh, I feel like shit. <laughs> there you go. That's what it is. That's why I couldn't pinpoint it. Because I don't do actions. It's more of feelings. Feeling mm-hmm. like shit today. Yes, exactly. Do you feel like shit too? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm going to put all these hums together. And by the end of this show, we're going to have like a whole song. Mm-hmm. A of, whole, um, I'm going to the fridge and getting a snack. Yeah. I feel like shit. Yeah. The hum. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I love that. That is so crazy. Um, do you have... like I, I'm sorry, because I could yeah, just like I'm imagine sorry. like you see hearing opera singers and even like even you're next to me and I know you're not going like a hundred percent that full opera, like yeah. it's so much passion and I feel like it's that same energy of like literally giving birth. It's like so <laughs> so grand. It's so grand and that's yeah. what opera gives me. I love that. I can't imagine though, because uh they i ended up getting a spinal and i went numb but i never went into full labor but just like the beginning i can't imagine how loud i'd be singing if i went into full labor. <laughs> oh my goodness yeah just full you did this to me <laughs> get out like, get yeah. out you son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh literally so when when you say planned a c-section like why or like from, was there complications or, yeah, like, or did had, you just want a C-section? Um, I had something called complete placenta previa, okay. which means that the placenta was completely covering my cervix. And if I pushed, I would have bled to death. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, they did keep an eye on it. They caught it at uh, 20 weeks. Oh, okay. So they were able to track it yeah. and see it. Okay. So sometimes it's just partial. Sometimes it's complete. Um and it can also move like like oh, the wow. bigger the baby gets it can move so they kept an eye on it and it didn't budge mm-hmm. so um yeah we just scheduled it and he was gonna come out anyway on that day because i went into labor oh wow okay <laughs> so yeah i kind of didn't want to bleed to death yeah i don't think that's something i'd want to experience either <laughs> And I'm pretty sure it would have been like, a, you know, when you bleed to death, it's like slow. And you just would have been singing opera. Yeah. Death, like. Yeah. But by the end, it would be like. Uh, uh. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> no, my gosh, that's horrible. <laughs> uh, so I would have um, been trying to harmonize with the beep <laughs> as I'm going out in my last like light. Like. Beep. Beep. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This is great. Good stuff. So, do you have any, I want to use the big word, aspirations to be a singer? Do I I have any aspirations to be a singer? I think yes. 100% I do. I think, yeah, waking up, going to sleep, parts of my day, I'm always thinking like, or working on my music. Mm -hmm. Um, 
It's just something, especially because, I mean, well, mu- first I have to tell you, music holds like such a special like part of my DNA. And it wasn't until maybe these past like six years, cause I wasn't always a dancer. Being in cheerleading, you're more like sharp and like you have to hit more motions more strictly. And so I wasn't very like flowy and like able to express myself with my body in those cheerleading days. It wasn't until like the past six years when I started actually doing Zumba and it was more like learning like Latin dances and more how to be my hips and more just about like my culture and who I am. Um, And I feel like once I started learning the way I could express myself through dance really helped that Mm. aspiration because now i'm now i'm i like dancing it's something that i feel it's something that moves me it's something that i'm that i love doing you will never catch me like not you'll never catch me still obviously (laughs) like of course i'm over exaggerating but them now those two going hand in hand is just like oh my gosh like you feel like unstoppable almost like i feel like oh my gosh i have star quality or oh my gosh i could definitely you know do this i am capable of doing this these are things that i both like am skilled at a little bit Mm -hmm. and i'm always thinking about it so yes i definitely think i do have aspirations to be like a singer and to at least try and you know go for it and just because oh there you go music saved my life So, you know, there was like a couple of times during the pandemic and just a lot of like things I was going through as a 21 year old, you know, in COVID, just getting out of my first relationship where I was so deeply in love with this person. And then, you know, going through that and I'm, I'm, I'm a very, I'm been learning also, I'm a very empathetic person. I feel things like 10 times deeper. Mm. And I feel like that's also why I love music more because I feel it 10 times deeper. I love really like movies recently because I just feel like emotions and things like more heavily. So there were times where like I wanted to like either harm myself or where I thought, you know, I was going to trigger warning, excuse me, where I thought I was going to harm myself and, you know, music was there and it saved my life. You know, that's what I would put on when I was at my lowest, darkest points where I needed saving. It was always, let me put on a song and let me just sing my heart out and like cry all over the floor and like get out of my system. And I've always felt better from music. And so I always say that music saved my life and I love the healing energy that, um, it can bring sometimes, and I would just love, I would love, love, love if other, if I could give that same experience to other people yeah. too. That's where I really connected with yeah. music was in my darkest moments, you know? That's a really good story. Um, and yeah, what do you, when you were telling it, do you ever, do you cry when you hear a good song? Like, yes. and, and it's new? Mm-hmm. Like, I, if I hear something, like, like Sean, you know, my husband, mm-hmm. he, um, he's working on his, fourth album with his band Mm -hmm. and he played me one of the clips and i would just started sobbing Mm -hmm. (laughs) especially because you know him and that's your husband you guys have a connection you feel like you can feel his emotions more in the music yeah i love that that. came from you that is so cool yes that's beautiful like the passion you know that's what also um inspires me daily is people's passion for things that they love like i love seeing people who are knowledgeable about things who like what they're doing and you know and they know what they're doing because you can really tell that person really loves what he's doing yeah i love passionate people yeah, yeah that's awesome so yeah that is beautiful even even if it's even if i hear it once and like the emotions sit with me again and again and again i'll still cry if i wanted to yeah and i'm the type of person i like to cry so i'll probably be crying <laughs> i have a playlist on spotify called mm-hmm. cry me a friggin river and it's Ooh. all the songs that make me cry i would love to start <laughs> A Do playlist it. like that. I think I have to, yeah. Yeah, it's got some good shit on there. Like if I'm feeling something and I know I need to get it out, I'll put it on in the car because I still drive to mm-hmm. go pick up my son. Mm-hmm. And like, I just cry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful and yeah. I love it. I really like too that the dance became part of it. Like the, because dancing is music too. It's just like, aren't you, it's, weren't, aren't you a Zoom instructor? I was. You were, I had, right? I think I vaguely yeah. remember you telling me that. I had to quit mm-hmm. um, cause I had really bad feet issues. Oh, okay, okay. I do plan on getting certified again though. Um, but with the, uh, with Zumba, it was like a monthly fee to keep up your certification. Right, and the like, Zen it, it's called, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I wasn't teaching. I'm like, um, I'll just save the money and then get recertified. Yeah. 
Especially so, if we weren't actively so teaching. Sad. I or, didn't want to, oh, and then no. I had to quit mm-hmm. teaching spin. Oh um, no! Because I was teaching okay. it in shape. Oh okay, um, this one right here. Yeah. Oh okay, I didn't know yeah, that. Okay. I was there two years, three years. Oh okay. Yeah. Um. So that was one of the harder things I went through. It's mm-hmm. just because I'm passionate about both of those things, and yeah, and my feet hurt so bad. Mm-hmm. It felt like you know. I would step onto the floor in the morning and an ice pick would go through my heels. Oh, wow. Like, it was okay. bad. It was like that? Okay. Yeah, so. But they're better now. They're all healed. Okay. I have my old lady feet inserts in my shoes. Yes. No, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have so, to take care of yourself. Yeah. That's what I was learning, too. Um, But yeah, Zumba. How did you discover Zumba or get into it? <laughs> <laughs> that look on your face. I wish I was recording this. <laughs> um it's a it's a funny story i only laugh um because um my ex was actually a zoom instructor so um i was with him for about three and a half years and so that was his thing you know he was doing three classes in the morning and two classes at night four days five days a week that's a lot of shaking your booty yes nice yes so he was and at first i didn't want to do it oh my (laughs) gosh i hated it i did not want to do it you know i didn't want to dance like that in front of people because i wasn't confident in it so I was always like, no, like, I would go, like, to support him, because that's just the type of person that I am. Uh, <laughs> I would go to support him, like, at his classes and just sit and watch, because I just liked watching, like, them dance, too. And, yeah, he had to, like, get, force it out of me, like, come on, just start dancing, like, start, start. And so I ended up starting to do Zumba. And so, yeah, it was, fr- it was through um, my ex that I discovered Zumba. Got it. I had never, I think I did Zumba once in like high school, but it wasn't what I thought it was. I think it was a, a, a woman teaching mm-hmm. um, and she was doing like the, it was, it wasn't dancing. It was like the hit or like the, another version of Zumba where like it's more strength or core workout. Got it. Okay. So I think just him and he was a dancer too. Seeing the, like the different style and now like, oh, he's actually dancing more. It's not more like robotic movements. Um, and I really liked that. And that's, yeah, that's how I started Zumba, was through my ex. And so then then it was, now I'm dancing three times a week in the morning and twice at night. So then I, I went from, like, doing no type of dancing to, like, now I'm dancing, dancing twice a day. Again, and a so, lot of shaking your booty. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I loved it. That's cool, too, when you get to see different people's styles. Yes. Um, for a long time, uh, the, the first Zumba instructor that I fell in love with Zumba in, mm-hmm. she was Armenian. And so oh, she okay. added the... Mm-hmm like the Middle Eastern flair mm-hmm. dances. So I loved that. And then when I moved out here and I took classes out here, I was like, oh, you mean people have different styles? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so. And he was in the little group too. They were called the Get It Crew. Mm-hmm. So it was about four of them and they would like go travel and like host different Zumba events. I used to love going to those Zumba events. They were so much fun. Just a bunch of people getting together dancing for those who are listening and they don't know. It's just like a bunch of people getting together and just dancing and like having so much fun and Even on, like, Breast Cancer Awareness Month during October, they'll have, like, um, dance in the mountains, and everybody's wearing pink, and I also just love the community of Zumba, too. Everybody's so nice, and everybody's just there because they love dancing. That's cool. And, yeah, and so at those events, everybody would get together, and it was just so many different, like, it was so cool how everybody brings their own, something different. You'll never see the same thing, unless, of course, you're going off, like, the pre-programmed ones that they send out or whatever, whichever ones, but, yeah, that's how I started doing Zumba. That's cool. I've been thinking about um, reapplying it in shape. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the last few years, I haven't had time at all, but <clears throat> now I, I'm coaching full time and doing podcasts full time. So yeah. it's really badass. I'm yeah, cool. That's I'm cool. Kidding. You're good. Yeah. You're good. You're <laughs> um, doing what you love. That's all but that But I've been thinking about going back because I really miss teaching spin. And mm-hmm. so it'd be A to teach or at least just be a sub because when you go there, you start Excuse as me. a sub. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you also get a free membership. I don't need a membership. I have a gym in the garage. In the garage, yeah, you did. But tell me I that. don't have mm-hmm. Zumba classes out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and so. it's totally different being surrounded by people too. Yeah, that's yeah. what I like too. I was certified actually in three hundred five fitness. Hmm. So it's What's that? more of an East Coast dance fitness. Okay. Um, it's literally like Zumba, but it's called three hundred five fitness. Um, the founder, her name is Sadie. I think I could be wrong. It's been such a long time. But I remember in 2022, I had signed up um, 
and it was a virtual class so it's not like where you go and get certified it's like a, a class for a, a two weeks and we get together through zoom and they okay. teach us like the basics and the core and like the style and um the standard of you know what they like to do and how they like to do their um dance fitness classes but it's only on the east coast which mm-hmm. i didn't know i thought i was gonna be able to like kind of like zumba go out and like scout people and like yeah. do a little thing at the park or even at the gym or something but no you ha- it they're only with that licensing you can only do 305 fitness in um the radius was like 25 within 25 miles of a 305 fitness studio like an actual one mm-hmm. and they're all on the east coast That's so awesome. when i certified um it was kind of like, okay, wait, what do I do? And th- at that time, it, um, like Zoom and Skype and online classes were very popular because of the pandemic. But that's not what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So I just stopped. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just was like, okay, no. You didn't move no. to the East Coast? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like California. No, I like it here. So the um, the acrobatics that you do, is that from cheerleading? Yes. I always wondered like where you learned how to do that. Yes, it was through cheer. Um that's actually how I started cheer. Well, it actually goes farther than that. When I was little, I was obsessed with Kim Possible. And so she's a spy and a cheerleader. Oh. So, um and she does her thing at least what gravitated for me. When I was little, I was always gravitated towards like shows or like um cartoons like characters up in the air doing acrobatics i thought that was so cool like i want to learn how to do a flip or i want to learn how to do a cartwheel or i want to learn how to do like crazy things like i see these characters doing and so we had a p it was in ninth grade i took pe and it was oh you're good we had a kitten walk across the keyboard we're good (laughs) (laughs) and um we had like a gymnastics course as part of like the PE curriculum. So for a week we were in like the wrestling room where they had the mats and we did like cartwheels and round offs. That was it. But because it was already like, I had my foot in the door I, and that's the type of person that I am too. I have like my, f- um, what's the saying? Like my hand, my foot in a pond and mm-hmm. all the ponds. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe. Like I have my foot in each pond, like a little bit of knowledge from each thing. Got it. Yeah. So I, know. I get, I get it. Now that my foot was already in the door, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is so much fun. Like I'm doing a cartwheel. I also grew up a little bit um, more heavier weight, heavier weight. So I couldn't really do those things. You know, I wasn't really mm-hmm. like, that's, I didn't look at myself as something. I didn't look at my, wait, what? I didn't look at um, tumbling as something Mark could do. Mm-hmm. I always thought like, oh no, like that's really hard. Like only gymnasts and like, People people. who go go get trained are capable of doing this. And so I'm like, oh, like, I actually like this. This is actually something like I don't get dizzy or, you know, I was the best one in the class. (laughs) Like a a ninth (laughs) freshman, you know, people are, their cart was like janky or like they round offs. They didn't really know. And I was picking it up. So I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is not that really hard. And from then, then I just started doing cartwheels and round offs like everywhere. Like after school, I was a big, I, I never went home. Even I lived right across the street from my school. I never went home. Um, that's a that's for a, oh, that's just family <laughs> issues that I just I I would didn't like being home. I'd rather have been out with my friends. I was always like at the park or at the youth center or just outside. I was never at home, but I know I was always doing car wheels and round offs. After that first week that I learned how to do it, I was so like, and so then I kind of just from my friend who was already a cheerleader. She was like, oh, like you know. Um, you should try out for cheer like they do cartwheels and round offs and things like that but nobody can tumble and we don't have a boy and so I was like oh okay I, I never thought about being a cheerleader you know that's never something that I had looked into and so just from learning that and like being seen by my friend then I that's what led me to go to the um, tryouts that first year and um, I had made the team um, just with a round off and a back and a cartwheel I couldn't do anything crazy yet I love but that then, you added yet. Yeah, but mm-hmm. then you know, being there and like surrounded by people, and then ha- and now I'm having a coach, and now I'm f- now oh we're all going to the YMCA. There was mm. like a specific um, YMCA specifically for gymnastics, so they had like the floor and the trampolines and the Ooh, and the pit and balance like, beams. Y- yes, nice. balance beams and the bars, everything. So now I'm in an environment where I feel safe and like I can learn. And I ended up. I think two years I was going, well, that first year is what really helped me. I think those first six months, um, 
I then I started going to it was called Open Gym. Mm-hmm. So where you like just go and you pay like a five dollar fee and then you get to like just use any part of the gym you want for like um, four hours in the night Ooh. and so there, it was always surrounded with like college cheerleaders and like gymnasts who are just practicing their floor routines like on like their day off or there was a lot of parkour people there mm. so those pe- those like big old buff guys are just like showing off and like doing tricks <laughs> and like um look what i can do yes yes <laughs> and then they don't do much they're just kind of like they're just scouting everybody and looking yeah. at everybody being nosy or making friends or whatever it is but and so then I started going to the open gym and then I, that's how I started learning like by myself was just going and like trying things and like on YouTube. And then, um, the girl who inspired me to try out for cheer, her sister was a cheerleader before, but she was also a coach. Mm. So she had like some experience coaching people and, and how, on how to instruct people on how to do those types of things. So then I started going with her to the open gyms and she started training me. So I was going every week for that first year. And then, like, after that first year, after my after my JV year, then I didn't really have to go as much. But so it was going through those classes and through my friend where I started learning. I have a whole video. I'll show you after. Or can okay. I show you now? Should we take a break? Yeah, let's take All a break. Right. I have a question for you. Yes. Who run the world? Girls. Beyonce. Who run the me, world? Me, you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, like, this is the first back handspring that I ever, like, that. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like, like, okay, I did it, yeah. I could not do that for whatever reason. Okay, that's what it feels like. Yes, that that was was the first one. That was cool. The reaction was awesome. (laughs) I was like, oh my gosh, like, that's so crazy, I could do it. And just, you know, not giving up too. There was so many times where I fell on my head. Of course, there were so many times where I fell or, like, ate shit or, yeah. But each time I got back up and I was like, okay, again, like, I, I wanted to do it so bad, so bad. And I think that's what also propelled me forward. Yeah. I love your story because it it allows people to know that if you're passionate about something, it doesn't matter whatever situation you're in. If you want it bad enough, you can go get it. Exactly. And you can do it. Exactly. Um, and it's just, you're an inspiration to people. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And you didn't let your body stop you. I didn't. I couldn't. I can't. Even right now, I can't. I still can't. Yeah. <laughs> What do you mean even right now? You look <laughs> like, fabulous. I can't, I, oh, thank you so much. But <laughs> yeah, you no, know, I do struggle mentally. I'm yeah. like, no, I don't look as good or I, I'm not as good as I think I am. Or I, I, I think I'm a very anxious person too. So, but no, going back to what you said, I 100% agree. I think if you really want something, like you should definitely go for it. I know a lot of people are like, oh, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Or if it's meant to happen, it will happen. But also it's like part of you has to go for it too. Yeah. Things don't just happen like, Things don't just happen like out of thin air. Like, yeah, you gotta make you know, it happen. Exactly. Yeah, and I just think enough passion, like you can take it anywhere. You yeah. can take it anywhere. And and when other people start seeing that you're about this, then I feel like then you'll start gravitating to people who are aligned to that purpose. You know? Yeah. Because like for me, especially like being on social media and trying to do like a gain social media. A following there it's just like you try so many things too but then you kind of try things that you don't want to try but you're just like oh like okay i'll try just to see but those things don't motivate you so then you don't really do it and then i also feel like right. i also believe at the same time because you're not motivated or it's not attracting your audience mm-hmm. it's true too like even now i still do cartwheels and i mm-hmm. do um wall handstands even though i'm in a larger body right now um that's like how you I start. St- I still love it, mm-hmm. you know? The first time my son saw me do a cartwheel, he was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is so funny. Like, he's never seen somebody do a cartwheel or just because it was you? Well, he he was playing in... So we were having band practice at mm-hmm. the drummer's house, and mm-hmm. him and the other little girl, um, the other band members that had a baby at the same time. Long story. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. So they're friends, and they were playing in the backyard, and she was doing cartwheels. Mom! Leah's doing cartwheels. I'm like, I can do a cartwheel. And he's like, he looked at me like, yeah, right, mom. <laughs> oh my <laughs> I was gosh. Like, what? And I did it. And I think he crapped himself just a little bit. <laughs> Probably, huh? So just amazed, mesmerized yeah. a little bit. And I was like, I can do I can do wall handstands too. Well, what's that? And I'm like, I'll show you when we get home. <laughs> 
And what was his reaction? I did one in the garage. Oh my goodness. That look of like, I don't know this person who's my mom. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like just totally not you. That yeah. wasn't you who did the cartwheel. It was somebody else. <laughs> I tell people, don't judge the fat. Big Never. people can do things too. I, and I've seen big girls do a lot of gymnastics mm-hmm. too. There were some big girls on the gymnastics team. They did it. They were doing fulls, layouts, doubles. It doesn't matter about your size. Nope. It's more about muscle and anybody could build muscle. But it doesn't come easily. No. Because you do need a lot of shoulders to be a good like tumbler. Mm-hmm. We're coming back from a break, and I just saw a really cool video, so hell yeah. And yes, you're an inspiration, and I will say it over and over again if you want me to. <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> that made me want to go outside on my trampoline and do some flips. A flip, huh? Yeah. See, like, it's, I've it's never done vibe. one, but... <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> but a cartwheel is a flip. You have done one. Oh, okay. A cartwheel is a flip. And I've yeah. done lots of round-offs, too. There you go. And then the you twisty... Tumble. What's the twisty round-off called? A twisty round-off. So, like... A cartwheel <sighs> would be hand, hand, foot, foot. 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 A round up would be hand, 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 feet, hand, feet connect in the middle, but land on two feet. I used to do this one where I would go into a cartwheel mm-hmm. and instead of like, I don't know how to explain it. So round off, you would land coming inward, but mm-hmm. I did this thing where I'd do a cartwheel and then twist and then land the <gasps> other way. Oh, wow. Does that have a name? <laughs> you invented it. You invented your own gymnast move. Yes. <laughs> that was my flip. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. And I, that was one of my look what I can do mm-hmm. things. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think it's fun and it's a good workout. It's a really good mm-hmm. workout. I can't do that now. Yet. I don't think I can. No. Yes, I can. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Not right now. I, I need to stretch, but. Right. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. can't do it, like, right at this minute. Yeah. But if I stretched, I could do it on yeah. the grass. On the grass. Yeah, and no wind. Wind scares me. No wind. Because you hear it in your ears, like, really loud if it's really windy. Oh. And I think, too, because you know how, like, your ears create the equilibrium in your body or, like, the balance yeah. in your body? I think the wind blowing in it, too, you're kind of, like, you get not discombobulated, just but, like, you just get, like, a little, Yeah. Yeah. Disoriented. Yes. It does yes. something i see stars <laughs> when oh my gosh growing up when people like you see people or hear people like oh i saw stars or i see stars or in cartoons you know like when they yeah. animate the stars going around the first time that happened to me that was so crazy because you actually see like has it ever happened to you where you actually see stars yes but only when i get migraines oh yeah. no mm-hmm. so it like kind of hurts yeah you're in, like it's no, like i can see yeah. dots yeah, those I, are my bad ones. So I don't. That mm-hmm. doesn't happen all the time. But continue. You see stars. I, I didn't get stars at the beginning, but like, um, like after I graduated and after I stopped cheering and like gained weight and then lost it and then like going back into trying to see if I still got it. Mm-hmm. Like when I had first moved over here, I would tumble at this park a lot and just trying to get back into it. Like you get up and you like see stars. Like they're just like bright. Like. And they travel, and I go. I remember getting up, and I'm thinking, like, what, the, like what the fuck, like, what is this, like? Did I just kill I'm myself? seeing stars, like that is so crazy. Like, yeah. you didn't, you don't know until you experience it. And so I now I like seeing stars because I'm like, oh, I'm special because you <laughs> are a star. Sees stars. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, <laughs> maybe that too. Yeah, and that, yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna ask too if you ever go to this park and just do cartwheels or tumbles yeah. or oh, whatever. Yeah. Not, not now. Mm-hmm. Not more recently now that I kind of mo- moved farther away from it, but when that yeah, because you're really far away. Yeah, now. that fr- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a car. Ladies I don't have a car right I now, so sarcastic. I don't have a car right now, so the park and everything is far right now. So yeah, but when I first moved here, I was at that park like every day, every other day, even if I wasn't doing cartwheels, just walking, or when I used to smoke a lot, I used to go to the park and smoke. <laughs> I, love, I love going to the park yeah now that we're whispering and you mentioned cars i have a question for you how long was that fucking car across the street when you guys moved oh, i was like we were like did he abandon it like you tried to make up <laughs> stories about why you left your car across the street because i know you had another one no, but like I just didn't. St- you didn't. I, didn't. <laughs> I, I thought you had another one. I, oh, I did get another one, but 
the time that it was sitting outside i did not have another one it was just yeah. sitting there i even she's had not people lying knock I, on my door is this your car no like oh my no goodness. the neighbors moved and they <laughs> abandoned it <laughs> you guys fight or flight i flew away <laughs> i left that car in the street for months yeah. maybe almost a year huh or longer than a year something like that it was a while yeah Mental we illness. definitely <laughs> were wondering about it because we knew it was yours <laughs> uh for those who don't know i got into a car accident and my car was totaled um and then i moved uh, but i was riding dirty and i didn't have insurance so i wasn't able to get it fixed right away uh, and um i don't think at that time I don't remember what where my head was at or what my priorities were, but it definitely was not the car. And we had just moved. Right. And so I didn't know what I wanted to do with the car, whether I wanted to fix it or whether I wanted to what. And my toxic trait is out of sight, out of mind. So I forgot about it. And it and it did sit there. My car was sitting there for like a year. Until my uncle had to tell me. My uncle's like my uncle called my grandma. I always heard things from my grandma. I love that lady. She's like, Frank called me and he said the car is gone. And I was like, what? And my grandma was so like mad at me because for months she was telling me, get that car moved, get that car moved, get that <laughs> car moved. And I just didn't. I just didn't. I don't know what I think sometimes. Like I said, out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> like that's my toxic trait. And I just left it there. So, yeah, I did leave it there. I, just, I abandoned awesome. it. And we it still had wondered. all my stuff in there. I remember I came to take like some stuff out like months after and i was like oh my gosh i forgot i had some of this stuff like i would come check on it like every six months mm -hmm. every six months <laughs> did you ever have friends check on it <laughs> no i didn't have no. any no okay, i don't really have any we friends saw out here people too. looking at it it was probably yeah. like people like lurking or trying to see yeah. if they could steal or probably just like yeah i'm telling you like with things like that i always love making up stories in my head <laughs> Um, when I worked at this restaurant once, mm -hmm. somebody abandoned their car in the mm -hmm. parking lot. Mm -hmm. And because of laws or whatever, it couldn't get towed. Mm -hmm. We couldn't tow oh, it. Oh, okay. And so this one time I looked into uh, the passenger side mm -hmm. and just like just looked at what was on the floor and stuff. And I actually started writing a short story called The Abandoners. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. I never finished it. But it, <laughs> I, I just that. like wrote in details about what was inside this car that somebody just left there. And what so when the you left like, this car, yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, this reminds me of this one time. The Abandoner. <laughs> yeah. That was definitely, yeah. What do you remember your plot? Like what, where you were going or what you were leading to in that story? specifically about that card i don't card. remember i only no. wrote a paragraph <laughs> <laughs> i love that oh i could probably find it can you i think, read it to you you think you still have it i think i know where it is <laughs> yeah can i hand you my mic and go get it real yeah, quick yeah. it's in the garage one two three four five four three two one five one oh my not even five <laughs> seconds oh my goodness okay i'm gonna read it to you okay is that okay yeah okay I can't read this. Will you read it to me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. The Abandoners. A concentrated layer of dust and abandonment blanketed the small car that sat in the restaurant parking lot. It had languished there for two months. Not one person knew how the vehicle got there. Actually, we're not sure if anyone really wanted to know, and we like it that way. The stench of death was unde wait <laughs> the stench of death was undetectable, so the possibility of a corpse in the trunk was ruled out. On the passenger seat were yellowed and curled papers and statements with the good old Bank of America logo in the top right corner. But legibility on these papers was almost non-existent when trying to read them from the outside. Another faded clipping from a newspaper sat sadly on the floor of the back seat. It was a headline that stated in large letters, hope fading away. Nobody ever thought of checking the doors to see whether or not they were locked. The aura that bled from this car was one which sent an eerie chill through anyone who attempted to get close. The police department explained that the car was unable to move, remove, unable to be removed due to its location in a private parking lot that's why we left it there so the employees observed with intense interest while on their smoke breaks and two months quickly passed before the car was finally tagged by parking enforcement we knew the investigation of our unplanned event was about to begin Ooh, oh my goodness i haven't read that in a I long time that. that's like the that's the hook that's like it's a investigation like story now like there's something going on yeah. i was hooked already. i gotta finish that i'm one. ready for the three-part series i'm ready the three-part series 
the three part or uh, a trilogy there you go the trilogy novel i swear <laughs> this was so perfect because i've been like cleaning shit out in my garage and i f- mm. i have this like like paper holder that mm. just has like random papers in mm. it and i always kept that in it and i always kept um the lyrics to a song and I found the mm-hmm. paper holder mm-hmm. recently and I put it on the desk out there and this was right in the front. Oh <laughs> I'm my like, goodness, that's I so funny. I think I know where it is. <laughs> it was yeah. like you had just seen it. Yeah. So your car brought that up <laughs> in the me. Heartbreak. And I'm like, oh, I want to go look in the windows. <laughs> but the thing with that is I knew it was your car so mm-hmm. I couldn't really make anything up. I couldn't make oh, any, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that anyway. is so funny, yeah. yeah. So tell me more. Like, I didn't know. So in my head, you were like, I bought this new car. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to leave this one here. But I didn't know you Uh, had a car accident. Oh, yeah, you couldn't tell? Or maybe you just didn't see it. I forgot what side it was on. So maybe because it was on the other side, you can't really see it from this point of view. But yeah, I had gotten into a car accident. Um, I was at a stop sign coming out onto a two-way intersection and i was with my brother we were i don't remember where we're going oh i think we were going to the gym yes i was in like some pink bright puffy (laughs) like snow pants and um a green like sweater and i just was like you know it was it was very normal i've taken this route like a million times ever since the accident i didn't go back i never went out i don't go out next to the fire station anymore Mm -hmm. i always go like i when i was living here i would always go like around or Mm -hmm. like after the accident i never went like straight down and tried to turn left anymore past the fire station and so i'm coming out inching out and then i look to my right that's my left (laughs) (laughs) i look to my right while looking to my i what (laughs) what i look (laughs) I said I looked to, look to my, my right. right, but I definitely looked to my left. That's why I'm laughing. Excuse that was me. great. <laughs> <laughs> but I looked to my right and I looked to my left and then there was nothing. I thought I was clear, but then I inch out to go. And then as I'm about to hit the gas, I see a single light. And so I, I don't really, it's kind of fuzzy, but I just remember seeing a single light thinking it was a motorcycle and then a motorcycle hit me and it was a motorcycle. Mm. And then. was Were they Okay. Yeah, he was okay. Okay. He hit the car and then he flew like off his bike. Mm. Well, my bro- that's what my brother told me. <laughs> I blacked out. I don't even remember what happened. I just remember seeing the light and then I remember standing on the street. Like be- anything between that from the impact to like me getting out of the car. I remember vaguely getting out of the car and like going out into the street to see if he was okay cuz he was like his bike was over there but he was over here and he looked like tore the fuck up. So yeah. And then I remember his girlfriend came and she was like, she was totally on my side. Like, she was like, this motherfucker, he's not even supposed to be out. I don't know why the fuck he's out. Like, she was just there like, Mm-mm. like he was not supposed to be out. Like, she kept saying that. <laughs> so then I just, yeah. And then, so it sat there. Um, I remember I just wasn't thinking about it for a little bit. Um, just because I didn't want to think about it, it for a little bit. And so I just started Ubering everywhere and like lifting. And that's kind of just been what I've been doing. Just Ubering, lifting places, um, the bus. Mm -hmm. Um, So if somebody asks you, do you lift, bro? (laughs) (laughs) L-Y-F-T, yes. You could be like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, no, because I do lift. Yeah, because I lift. (laughs) I think about times in cheerleading when I was literally lifting like girls. Yeah, that that counts. I could say, yeah. That counts. (laughs) I definitely lift. Not Uber, because Uber is expensive, like $2 more expensive than Lyft, I've noticed. Got it. I've never taken either one Mm because i'm old enough to where when i would go out to the bar with my friend we'd call a taxi Mm -hmm. and in case you don't know what a taxi is and i'm just kidding (laughs) wait (laughs) what's a taxi i'm not that young oh my goodness yeah this is good um i have one more question for you at the end of every episode i ask everybody the same question and that is if you could give one piece of advice to the world what would it be i think growing up my mother always instilled in me to never try to be somebody i'm not um Luckily, I've been so fortunate and blessed enough to have people at least immediately around me because it hasn't always been my, it's not my whole family that accepts me, but at least for me, I've been blessed enough to where the people immediately around me have never judged me or made me feel like some type of way for being who I am, just for being Mark, plain and simple. I always, even 
um, like when I get and I'm going, no, I'm not going off topic because it's relatable. Even when I'm go, <laughs> even when I'm I'm talking to people and like meeting with people and like people will ask me like about sexuality or things like that, or even along things along identity along the lines of identity, mm-hmm. I've never been this. I've never been that. I've, I've never been a singer or I've never been a dancer or I've never been a cheerleader. I've always been just Mark. You know, like, it doesn't matter what you like, who you like, what you do, who you do. As long as you are who you are at your core, I feel like nothing can stop you. Um, Don't be afraid to be yourself is what I would definitely say, especially in times when you feel like you should be afraid or you get like, don't, don't dim yourself down. Don't dim your light. Don't be afraid to not be who you are because at the end of the day, you're going to find out who is really there for you when you need them the most, who's going to accept you when you need them the most. Um, if they don't like something that you're doing or they don't like who you are, like dim, dim yourself down or can you be less this or can you do? N- no, fuck all that. Be exactly who you are and that's it and nobody can hurt you. Walk around with your head held high. If people say things to you, whatever. Thank you so much. Mwah, have a good day. Bye bye. And just sashay away. Just, yeah, I would say don't be afraid to be yourself. 100% don't be afraid to be yourself because that's how you're going to find the people who are meant to be in your life. Okay, A, mic drop. And B, I'm not crying. (laughs) You almost made me cry. Oh my God. I I get deep sometimes. If if I'm I'm warmed up and like it gets there, it'll definitely get there. That was good. Yeah, I've been through a lot. I've seen some things. Especially growing up, um, having young parents. Mm-hmm. My mom was 15. My dad was 17. So I don't think uh, one thing probably people don't assume about me or would know about me was that like a lot of the times I was me, I was we were always left alone. So especially me being the oldest of now six siblings, it was always me like having to feed my siblings or you know we were always left home alone you know i don't i don't blame my mom for doing like not being there as much as she could have been you know she was like 17 18 20 21 you know trying to be a young adult and nobody there's no instruction book on kids so that's i had to mature a lot growing up so i have been through a lot i have been I have put myself into situations because of certain things where I've had to learn, unfortunately, the hard way. But, you know, that's how you live and you learn. And unfortunately, I have learned a little bit of lessons. I do like to learn the hard way. I will Mm -hmm. say that for sure. Sometimes that's the best way to learn is the hard way. So thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Andrew signing off. Until next time.